Whether you operate one forklift or thousands, one location or hundreds, the new My Toyota customer portal can help you optimize your operation and material handling equipment. This one-stop, free-to-use platform is designed to help you take control of your information and make smarter decisions, all at the touch of a button. Register and access your data today at my.toyotaforklift.com. That's my.toyotaforklift.com. Hey, it's Kevin Lawn with the New Warehouse Podcast, and I am on site today at the J Group here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And I'm going to be joined by the president and COO at the J Group, Blake Dudek, Akulesh Srivastava, who is the founder and CEO at Phoenix Commerce, and Ryan Millman, who is the co-founder and CEO at UnDigital. And we're going to talk today about the J Group. We're going to talk about all their individual different companies, their founder stories, and how they got to where they are today. We're also going to dive into the overall e-commerce transaction and how each one of them is playing a part within that transaction as individual units and then also as a cohesive unit and bringing that together for an overall elevated customer experience and, of course, an overall increase in brand value. So, Blake, I want to say thank you first, welcoming sure. us in here to uh, your facility and, and your company. So why don't we start with you? Why don't you tell us a little bit about kind of uh, your story here, the J Group story, and, and what you guys are all about? Sure. So J Group is a family-owned business. At its core, it's a pure 3PL now. But as you can imagine, we started this business 65 years ago. My grandfather started it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, my mom ran it for about 30 years uh, after he decided to retire. The origin story is really my grandfather was a marketer at heart. So he was a promotional products and traffic building promotion guru. And he would pitch large brands that had multiple physical locations across the country. And he would pitch them traffic building promotions. Over time, the large agencies in New York kind of outclassed him from a presentation standpoint. But he was already doing all the logistics portions of those promotions. So Uh, when the agency would go to Sony, as an example, and sell them a promotion, Sony would say, great, now go make it happen agencies didn't have that capability. So they would say, well, this guy Jay down in Pennsylvania can do it. Why don't you go talk to him and he'll, he'll help you out. So that was kind of the origin story of the logistics arm of our business. And over the course of time, working with those large brands, we had a large call center. We obviously did 1-800 number work. We did uh, catalog ordering, things like that. Once you're doing all of that, e-commerce logistics and logistics in general became, kind of came with it. And, and that's yeah. kind of how we ended up where we are today. Interesting, interesting. And uh, your grandfather's name is Jay? Grandfather's name was Jay. Okay. That's yes. why I was wondering where the Jay came from. Yep, gotcha. Yes, the grandfather's name was Jay. Very yep. interesting story. And, and 65 years of history, a lot of evolution there too as well, which I'm sure we'll, we'll draw on a little bit as we talk about e-commerce transactions here Absolutely. today. But let's hear a little bit from Akilesh on Phoenix Commerce. Tell us a little bit about Phoenix Commerce. What is it you do and, and how you came to found the company? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, first of all, thank you, Kevin. Uh, so I have been um, in the industry for about... 26, 27 years now, Mm -hmm. e-commerce supply chain logistics. Um, Prior part of my professional life, I worked with large Fortune 500 retailers, Gap, Nordstrom, etc. My last corporate gig was running shipping and global returns for eBay marketplaces. Mm. One of the things over the years which became pretty apparent to me, came too late, but after Amazon launched launched Prime in 2005, and how e-commerce accelerated and how... Uh, the delivery became the competitive edge for them and how everybody in the industry is kind of always playing catch up to that. It it was pretty obvious that we need to build a technology platform where other brands can actually compete and win against Amazon in the ecosystem. So really, I decided, came out of eBay in 2017, decided to build build a platform where kind of traditional um, tech industry, they have siloed the entire operations, uh, customer experience on the front end, pre-purchase is very broken and disjointed with everything which happens from the operations side, post-purchase. So we decided to build a platform by bringing in all the unique core capabilities, whether it is order management or transportation management, how do you select the carrier, where do you, should you ship from, how do you keep your customers updated. So really, a single platform we call is delivery management platform, okay. which really bridges the customer experience uh, with the back-end supply chain operations. So we really play end-to-end, and of course, we rely on partners like J-Group to make sure that our tech is, is only going to be as good as operations which are happening behind the scene, because we are relying on a lot of data and machine learning and intelligence to improve mm. the customer experience. So that's a little bit about us. We today work with 
some large brands like uh, Taylor Brand, Bombas, Coriana, to name a few. Very interesting, and and I think you know data is probably going to be a, a core component of part of our conversation today as well. So we'll dive a little bit further into that. But Brian, why don't you kind of round us out here on the founder stories? Tell us all about Undigital. Yeah, and, and thanks for having us, Blake. Really appreciate it. So a little bit about me. I've been a serial entrepreneur. I started my first company in college, focused on e-commerce early days. I remember when we started, the search engine was Hotbot, uh, so really early days. But I started a number of different companies. We actually operate four different companies today. We've got about 300 people in the organization. I consider myself a marketer first and foremost. And so in the 2010s, we got tools to do marketing the right way for e-com, right? What, what is marketing the right way? It's the right message to the right customer wherever they are. It's relevancy. It's something meaningful, valuable, you know, presenting helpful information. Uh, and it's measuring and optimizing, right, all of our marketing experiences. And I think the light bulb moment for Undigital, which is the company we're talking about today, was being our own fulfillment center. We, we've got about 100,000 square feet where we ship out lots of orders every day. And Looking at those brown boxes leaving and recognizing that this is a very important touch point to our customers. You know, they're excited to get their order, but we're not doing marketing the right way at this touch point, right? You know, at best, you know, you have the ability to maybe throw the same leaflet into every package for every customer. That, that's not how we do marketing in any channel these days. And so we said, how do we do it the right way? And we got really excited to solve this problem for our own brand. We hired the best engineers. Uh, We said, we're going to figure this out. And we invented what we now call in-package personalization, where the the, the inventors and and global leaders in this, it's the ability to provide every single customer very personalized, very curated collateral that's extremely relevant to them. Could be information about how to use the products they purchased, you know, uh, how many loyalty points they've earned. Maybe they're not in the loyalty program. We want to tell Sarah why she should activate. Uh, It's sort of endless as far as what the use cases are. And uh, we do that by uh, adding smart printers uh, in uh, very strategic locations at the fulfillment uh, warehouse. And uh, Jay Group's been a great partner. We've got lots of customers that are using the technology. um, And uh, all of our customers, you know, I think the last thing here, which was so amazing to us, was originally the concept was let's just put a smile on the customer's face. Let's make them feel a little bit more connected to the brand Mm. but as we actually started to measure the efficacy and the results and the increase in reorder rates it was way more than we had anticipated so we have so many brands that are using this and it's still early days but it's an an incredibly exciting technology yeah very interesting and I, i think it's so interesting too because that unboxing experience almost becomes like the store experience in a sense, right? If you're not going to brick and mortar and doing that type of thing. So so very interesting to hear from all three of you on, on kind of how your businesses came about, how we are here today. And, and we'll talk a little bit too about how you guys are working together. But why don't we start to understand, I guess, exactly where each one of your solutions kind of falls in place within that e-commerce transaction with the consumer. So so I, I think if I understand correctly, maybe that, that Akulesh would be the one that would be at the, the start. Is that correct? That, that is correct. So if, if you think about consumer journey today, right? So a typical consumer to a brand, they will probably search online on Google or they might even be researching on, on Amazon. But generally it begins on Google, right? You're searching for some product. One of the things which... Tons and tons of data has shown what Mm. people care about is beyond the product is when will I get it and how much do I need to pay for shipping. Of course, they may not need that information when they're searching on Google, but then as soon as they land on the site, they expect to see that information right there in front of them before going all the way to the checkout. Mm. That's the Amazon Prime experience, which is what we're talking about. Amazon obviously has perfected it since 2005. We bring that capability today for any brand we work with starting on the product pages, they can provide that similar visibility to their shoppers. They can get to see, they can see essentially, if I were to buy this product now, when will I get it? So it's no longer five to seven business day or I ship it in two days. When will you have it in your hands? Mm. And then behind the scene, essentially, it all is ingrained in data as we touched upon earlier, where knowing where your inventory is located, what is the best possible way to ship each order, uh, from where you should ship it, what carrier service you should use. So from brand standpoint, you want to make sure that while you are hitting the customer expectation from delivery perspective, you're also doing it in a profitable fashion. Right. Right. So that's the critical component of it. So starting on the product pages, cart and checkout, uh, providing that personalization from delivery perspective, somebody is as physical stores, offering them in-store inventory visibility, providing buy online pickup in-store. Even doing the omni-channel, which is, yeah, I can ship from multiple stores to reduce my shipping spend and also improve the time to deliver. 
actually, right. right, in many of those cases, or even reduce the markdown. So there are a lot of use cases which we start unlocking by exposing that information up front to the customers as they're going to the shopping journey. And then once, as soon as it's dropped, obviously, order would go to treatment, basically either at their own warehouses or if, they are, if we are a treatment, a J group, we have several common customers, yeah. we'll send it to them, they'll process the order, and it is going through the processing we start sending out those customers the notification. Hey, your order is being processed right now through emails or SMSs. It is still going to be arriving by this date and so on and so forth. So really it's like 360 degree view of the customer experience from the time kind of think about you walk into a store, you feel the product, you pay for it, you walk out with your hands, I mean, yeah. to the, put the product in your hands. Whereas in e-commerce, you take the money up front, but if you're not telling people when you will get it, it's pretty frustrating experience. Right. And, and that's what, where we come in, actually, right? Like really eliminating that uh, uncertainty from buyer's mind altogether. Our customers have seen phenomenal incremental conversion. I mean, some customers, they have even doubled, actually, the conversion rate by providing that visibility. Of course, varies on the, on the category of the product and so on. Some have seen reduction in shipping spend and, and a lot of other business benefits, which are enormous mm. in this day and age. Yeah, yeah, I think that's so interesting because it's almost like your digital kind of a retail clerk or something that's helping you in the store, right? You're, you're kind of holding their hand throughout the whole transaction, letting them know what's going on, where it's going to come from, when is it going to come, which I think is, is super, super important. I know I get super frustrated when I don't know when a package is going to come, right, or doesn't show up when it's supposed to. So, so you're kind of handling that on the, the front end, right, and, and making sure that it's coming out of the right location where it's supposed to be. And sometimes that right, right location is J Group, right? So, Blake, why don't you tell us a little bit about kind of how J Group comes into the transaction process? Yeah, sure. So, you know, obviously, Akalesh talked about a lot pre-purchase, right? Right. And the fact that he is able to capture all that data up front and be able to provide that customer that knowledge before they ever click an add to cart button is mm-hmm. enormous, right? But at the same time, without having good execution on the back end, all the data and all, all of that, in, all that information becomes useless. Because if we ship right. it a day late then we haven't met that promise of that customer. And that customer's frustrated, and, and you know, there's other things that we can do to solve that. But as far as execution goes, you know, like I said, we've been in business 65 years. We've been, we've been doing this for a very long time. We've invested in best-in-class technology ourselves. So we're using Manhattan Associates in the warehouse, obviously a tier, yeah. one, tier one operating system. We've been on that since the mid-2000s before this building opened. And because we've been operating that system, and yes, we've gone through several upgrades since then, mm. but we really have been able to finely tune, without massive modification to that system, how we treat individual customers. So if mm. you were to walk around our warehouse today, what you'd see is many of our customers have some level of customization. That might come in the form through inbox customization, working with Ryan and his team on custom inserts. It might come through custom cartonization where they're shipping fragile items or they've got a special type of presentation they want to present from an unboxing experience. Many are using lock control or temperature, have temperature requirements because we're using Manhattan. We do lock control, expiration. This facility is all geothermal controlled. So we've got 73 geothermal wells dug in this building. So we maintain temperature. And so the vast majority of our customers have, like I said, some level of specialization or customization. We obviously are located in both coasts as well. So we have two facilities here in Lancaster, one in Reno. And so when you partner that with a a technology like Phoenix, it really end our broad array of carriers too. So we're using right now everyone from DHL, OSM, UPS, FedEx, GLS, LaserShip, among, among others, especially internationally, some passport and things like that. So when you combine that level of customization, that level of optionality for a customer, and then combine it with a technology like Phoenix, it gives our customers a tremendous ability to offer various levels of customer experience. They're really able to curate to even down to the individual customer how they want to manage that order and how they want to deliver it. What packaging should it go into? What carrier should it go into? Should we add a customized pack slip for right. either gift notes or high value customers? Can we promote in box a, a brand new product that's coming out in a month that based on your customer profile, we anticipate you're going to want to order. So being able to combine all the technologies and all the experience you see on the panel here is, is really kind of what we've been able to create and 
I think for many of our customers, it's added a tremendous amount of value. They've seen AOVs go up. They've seen carts go up. They've seen conversions go up. They see reorders go up and lifetime value go up. So when you start combining all, you know, it, I don't think you can look at e-commerce as a magic bullet solution. Yeah, you know, it's just not how it is. You have to have those individual components that, when they when they all get combined together, it really maximizes that brand value, as you talked about earlier. We'll be back after a quick break. You hear a lot about supply chains these days because if the past couple years have taught us anything, it's that an efficient, well managed supply chain is absolutely critical to keeping businesses successful and consumers happy. I'm Will Haywood and I host a podcast called All Business No Boundaries, where we talk about supply chains, how they work, what happens when they don't, and the innovations that are redefining what's possible in the world of logistics. Join me for insightful interviews with thought leaders and industry experts. We discuss how optimizing supply chains can break down the barriers that are holding businesses back. That's All Business No Boundaries by DHL Supply Chain. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think it's very interesting, too, because uh, we were talking earlier before we sat down here. I mean, you know, sometimes as a, a 3PL, it's, it's hard to differentiate a little bit. But when you start to put these tools in place and you're able to now, you know, make these connections and then add uh, more value to the brand itself, which is adding value to that end consumer at the end, right, then that becomes a win all the way around, right? Yep. So, so you're able to really kind of position yourself and, and kind of differentiate in that aspect and be able to add these kind of digital tools and, and data tools to really make that overall customer experience, which at the end of the day is what matters, right, that much better. So now, Ryan, tell us a little bit about your part of the process, because you're kind of at the, the end, right, of the transaction in a sense. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I think, you know, speak to everyone's point, you know, everything we're talking about here is about customer experience. It's about building, you know, an impression in the customer's mind about the brand. The customer is excited, you know, are they going to get the order on time, sort of giving them the visibility into order information, ship information. That's really great. You know, when they get that package, you know, we all know that e-commerce is extremely competitive. Most companies, you know, they have 20, 30, 50 competitors. And, and at the end of the day, you know, the customer gets to decide, you know, where they go and who they patronize. Mm -hmm. And so getting their item is great. People are excited to get it. But, you know, how it comes, what it looks like, you know, that is an image that the customer is going to have, and that's in their brain going to connect and build affinity to, to a particular customer or lack of affinity. And so the ability to level up that moment, that experience, and put a smile on the customer's face and give them something meaningful and relevant and personalized is extremely valuable. And that's definitely where Undigital comes in. You know, we, we partner with the J Group. Um, at the time that they are, uh, it could be at the time they're either fulfilling the order, uh, we mm -hmm. can provide a smart printer that will automatically produce very personalized collateral at the time they're boxing. It can be upstream. You know, we can attach to the shipping label, um, actually oh, on wow. the same exact sheet yeah. of paper, but it's cardstock with a shipping label that peels off. Our piece has a perforation. And, you know, this is beautiful marketing collateral, right? This is not copy paper. This is not a packing slip. This is full color personalization. And what's great about this is our brands control Every piece of marketing, they, they set up all the logic and campaigns in our platform. So think of us like Facebook ads for packages. We have all this logic, mm -hmm. all these campaigns. They all live online. And for the J Group, they don't have to know anything about what's supposed to go in any customer's package. It's fully automated. It prints at the right time. It's automatically attached to the shipping label. They're just printing. Their packers don't need to know anything. They just have the right piece. It's error-proof, and it just goes into the package. And again, you know, the use cases are almost unlimited as far as welcoming your first-time customers to the brand, telling them, hey, we know that you have dry skin. That's why you're trying this product. Well, these are three other products that we think are perfect for you that will also help you hydrate. Like, mm -hmm. we're getting extremely specific. And we're doing things that are going to help drive value. And whatever the, 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 the ROI or metrics you're measuring off of, typically it's we want to increase our reorder rates. We want to drive that next order. We want to increase lifetime value. And Blake mentioned all of these things. You know, it's easy to do it when you give people the right call to action, something extremely specific to them. They will read it. You know, they will take action. And... Our system is backed by a full analytics platform, so our brands actually A-B test campaigns. Imagine you, know, you want to do your best welcome kit, Well, we have a version A, a version B, a version C, and we actually see every day the orders coming in, we can see which one of those actually resonates the best. And so we're optimizing this channel to maximize success. Oh, wow. yeah. Our brands across the board average about a 9.8% increase in reorder rates, right? What's that worth? That's huge. Uh, we have brands driving eight figures in incrementality, and so as you optimize this channel and your marketing team is controlling 
very personalized packaging. They're controlling what's happening at the warehouse level. It becomes extremely impactful to the organization. Yeah, I mean, I think that's super, super powerful. And the fact that you're able to, you know, adjust and, and test and, and change so so quickly to be able to do that, I think is a fantastic thing. And I have to say, like, you know, as, a, as an operations guy, I mean, I think the fact that, you know, like J-Grew, for example, doesn't really have to think about it. It's just spitting out, like, what's the right thing? I mean, that's very different from what you would see traditionally where you have an SOP and this type of order gets this insert well, and that and, insert. And, yeah. and to give you a more specific example, yeah. one of our customers, and, and the way we found Ryan, was we had one customer who was a, a very high-profile protein brand. Supplements, mm. they want to be able to customize their offering to their customer. Uh, and they had 36, I believe, different inserts that could be picked based on an order profile. Wow, yeah. Um, as a operator, as you know, every single pick creates incremental cost. And we were able to find Ryan and say, hey, you know, we're creating this incremental cost because we have, we have labor hours, storage, everything mm-hmm. else that's being, that's being caused by, by this number of inserts that this brand wants to offer. What can you do to help fix this? And initially, we figured he could print the 36 and we wouldn't have to go pick it. And he said, oh, no, I can go way beyond that. <laughs> and when we introduced it to the customer, the customer said, so I can match whatever my ad on uh, Instagram was or Facebook or wherever you're going to market. Yeah. I can add that same profile, that same, that same content into my in, inbox personalized insert. Yes. And that wow. was like the ma- that was like the magic moment where we all realized, you know, how powerful that could be. Yeah, and we, yeah. you know, we, we hear a lot where people have these. They try and create elaborate rules around getting things to packages. It becomes very hard. It's hard to measure. But we're now doing every piece is truly one to one, right? So the thirty six, you know, if you're shipping hundred thousand orders, is literally hundred thousand unique pieces of content, all automated. And the you know, the fulfillment centers, you know, always start out saying, "Ooh, like this can't slow us down." But yeah. the truth is, we uh, we come from. You know, oper- you know, have our own operations. You know, we put a lot of time and effort to make sure that we add zero incremental time. This is an automated on-demand technology. And Blake and kudos to Blake and his team. They're one of our early partners. They recognized it immediately. Brought us a lot of customers, and you know, been able to create a lot of value for the brands that we've partnered on. Yeah, I think that's an amazing technology because I mean, it, and it goes super deep too. It sounds like you know, connecting to like a specific Instagram ad and, and being able to drive that all the way through the process. I think is a I think fantastic use thing. Use cases in this again, if you think yeah. about it, right? The kind of use case could be like when a customer bought something, what are the right products they looked at, which they were interested but they didn't buy. Mm. Now, if you think about the use case, you can even actually give this product specific coupons to basically motivate those customers to place the purchase. Oh wow. Yeah, uh, much sooner than what they would have done otherwise, right? Hey, yeah. we saw that you were interested in these two other products as well. Place the order now, and this is twenty percent time bound coupon. Yeah. Uh, again, the use case is just mind boggling. It's really taking the power of marketing, connecting with data and execution, which Blake and Ryan touched upon. How to bring it all together to provide much better value to the brands. Yeah. yeah, and the customers. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it's pretty amazing, like, uh, assistant, I, I'm, I'm a marketer, so I, I just love it, but seeing what other people create, you know, we, we give the platform, and these teams come up with amazing things. We have pet food companies that give you feeding guidelines, but they put the photo of your dog literally on the printed collateral. Wow. Um, we've got nice. beauty brands that have 500 products, and whatever product you ordered, we power a, we call it a handwritten note, it's actually printed, it looks like it's handwritten, uh, but it'll give you tips about your specific item, how to use mm. it, how to apply it. it. It's almost endless, so it's, it's really... It's really gratifying for me you know, to just to see some of the, the amazing use cases that are out there. Yeah, I mean, I think that's really fantastic. And, and being able to then, you know, I guess we kind of talk to you like individually about how you guys are solving your individual problems and, and a little bit about how you're doing it together. But maybe you, you, I kind of open this up to the group here and whoever wants to chime in first can chime in. But, you know, how, how are you guys finding, because uh, we're all here together today because you guys all work together in some capacity, you have partnerships. I mean, how does it all come together as a cohesive unit to really elevate that overall customer experience, but still drive value for the brand itself? So I, I can probably go first because if you sure. think about Phoenix, we have no physical touch with the product in any way, shape or form. Right. Right. Like we're not touching the box. We're not putting anything like smart, which Ryan is doing. And then we are not doing the processing of order or shipping it out. Mm. We are completely reliant on data. Data is only as good as the operations which are happening and how quickly we can get access to the data and, and then yeah. using machine learning and AI on top of it. So really think about whatever is happening in the warehouses here on real-time basis, we know that hey, um, this is the capacity at which the orders are being processed in the warehouse. 
these are the different carriers and services they have accessible and we have access to tons and tons of carrier data. So using all that, we are personalizing experiences in some cases even on the Google search actually, right? Where mm. you are searching for a product which Blake might be filling from his warehouse, but we know that hey, this is the processing time at any given point in time. We can provide real-time delivery promise right there on Google search. On the search uh, even result, Even on yeah. the market and even the email marketing, which is, these are some of the other use cases we are unlocking with our clients where you're sending out those marketing emails, you have some specific products in those mails. Imagine the personalization where now you can say that if I open the, pro open the email at any given point in time, it acts as the product page, which is, mm. yeah, I can get it today. Or if you have physical stores, there are three items my size, they are available in store near me. I can go and pick it up from there. So you have just uh. hyper-personalized this whole thing. It is only done when you have the real data coming from basically the operator. Same thing, uh, kind of post-purchase, where once you have filled the order, getting the tracking information, providing that visibility to the customers real time, how the package is moving, are they still going to get it or not? And, and it goes back, back and forth, right? Because this is where the tide integration comes in. When Blake, is, Blake and his team, they are getting information from us, which is, hey, this is the promise we made to this customer. This is when it should be shipped out from the warehouse, this warehouse. This is the service which has been selected. And for brands, it's very easy because think about brands, they are ultimately coming with these cool products and marketing. They don't have to right. worry about operations because that's why they have J-Group. And they are, sure, they are certain now peace of mind that if while Phoenix is making all these decisions and this works very kind of hand in glove approach with J-Group's operations capacity, which is we are gonna be processing the order in the most cost effective way to kind of create a better experience and then ultimately the way I would layer on is the hyper personalization which Ryan is doing in the box when as a customer you get the product and you have a personalization right there at that moment not what else can beat it yeah yeah absolutely and I think it's almost like I mean you get the three of you together right I mean it's kind of like you're you're creating the personalization like all the way through absolutely, right like right. you talk about you know kind of tracking them, I guess, wherever they are saying like, oh, here's a coupon or here's this or, uh, you know, this is when it's going to deliver and all those different things. Like you're giving them that that catered experience that, you know, otherwise, I guess, traditionally we would have gotten if we go to the store. Almost, Absolutely right? So right. you're kind of recreating that virtually or, or digitally. You're recreating that virtually. Yeah. One of the use cases which I'm again, thinking out loud here <laughs> is uh, what Ryan is doing at the time of printing the box, imagine yeah. as a customer, I place the order, and now I'm tracking the order. Same personalization can be applied on the branded tracking pages. Same personalization can be surfaced by email updates, by SMS messages. So you are actually keeping customer excited about, hey, you are gonna receive this product tomorrow, mm. and just limits are endless there, basically. That the use cases, they are phenomenal. Yeah, and, so, and similar you know, from our end, be, being a 3PL, we're only successful when our customers are successful. True. If, if we're delivering yeah. late or we're shipping incorrectly or we're, you know, they're not, their marketing isn't as successful because they're missing a component of it, you know, order volumes go down, AOV goes down. And so our goal in the relationship with these guys is really to, again, back to the whole increasing a brand's value, increasing mm -hmm. lifetime value of a customer. Because the more reorders that those, that those customers create, the more revenue we, we can generate, the better we can service those customers, the more growth we all collectively see. And when you talk about the value we're creating here, we're not talking about dollars per order, right? right. We're talking about, you know, in some cases, pennies, in some cases, 30, 40 cents to create that additional value. And depending on how Akalesh's team actually routes orders, you can see pretty significant savings, actually. Right. Just as an example, you know, let's just say you're delivering a product in New York City from Lancaster and you promised an EDD three or four days out. Akalesh's tools are smart enough to say, well, the, the promise day is three days out. We know that based on all the data you've provided that if that order leaves today, we don't have to ship it with a sure post. We can actually convert it to a DHL expedited or DHL mm -hmm. expedited max and downgrade the cost of that shipment while still hitting that estimated, estimated delivery day. So in some cases, by going through this method and going about it the right way and following the A-B testing, you can actually reduce your cost while delivering all the value we just talked about. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that's super important. And Ryan, you want to add to Yeah, I just want to add, I mean, as you think about you know, the components that we all sort of offer here, right, and we're, we're really talking about, you know, what is the value of customer experience and, and uh, you know, exceptional customer experience, right? Getting the order out on time, you know, having the customer, giving the customer the knowledge and the power, meeting their expectations, wowing them at that final touch point. 
It's not a nice to have. It's a requirement in today's competitive space, right? The ROI is, is huge. The, the value of losing a customer, losing their lifetime value is incredibly significant. Again, we're right. all, there's, there's so much competition. So as you sort of uh, think of this as almost like a, a warehouse stack, a post-purchase stack, there's, there's definitely a pre-purchase component as well, but this is, this is a stack that's not, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's a, you know, a, a nice to have. I think anything that's going to help drive incremental returns and, you know, I know there's a major conversion component to uh, the Phoenix solution, certainly with what we do it on digital, you know, the proof is in the pudding as we measure every day and, show, and showcase, you know, extremely uh, incredible results. These things are critical to, to build a successful brand. And we know it's all hard. Building brands are, are difficult. And so mm. you've got to have the right partner like a J group to really ensure that they've got your back, that they've got smart technology, which can ensure that the customer is getting what they think they're getting and what they paid for. And so you've got to have the technology all the way through. And I think that's where we all come together. And the, the, the combination of these elements is, is so much stronger than any single one, but together, it's a very powerful, profitable system for today's, I think, modern brands. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think being able to to bring you guys all together and, and have that cohesive unit, as we kind of talked about here, is it just increases that value overall that not only you can deliver for the brand, and, and I'm sure, Blake, you see it too, you bring in a, a brand and, you know, they have a question, like, how could we do this a little better? And I'm sure now you have an answer, right? Yep. So, so you'll be able to, to drive value more for the brand. And then, like you said, in turn, that's creating the better customer experience, which is creating that long-term value for the brand itself with that customer. And it's all around just a, a win-win situation. And I think and I think it's really important too, as you touched on there, kind of the the incremental, you know, cost around that. You know, if you look at the the cost to do that, and you know, some people are gonna say, Oh, now I'm gonna have all these different tools I'm working with, all these different things, like it's gonna, you know, increase my my overhead and my spend and all these things. But as you pointed out, in in the long run, when you make that investment and really try and improve, utilize data smartly and be able to drive all those things from you know the physical aspect to you know the the pre-purchase aspect, the post-purchase aspect. You're really driving that value, and and overall, it's gonna be a, a win for the brand itself, right? So very interesting talking to all three of you and, and learning about these different things and and the companies and the solutions that you guys have developed. I'm curious as we kind of wrap up here, I, I'd like to go around and and just get as we're talking about e-commerce here today, and just get your perspective on what what does the future of, of e-commerce look like, maybe from in general and, and just from your perspectives and, and your solutions? I think from my standpoint, I think especially as you've looked at the last couple of years, obviously COVID was a boon to almost every e-commerce brand out there. Right. With, with very few exceptions. There were higher orders, average order value went up, CAC was fairly low for a time period. Um, and then as we've gone through the last three years, we've seen CAC go up significantly. So I think a lot of brands who have raised money, a lot of brands who have experienced that growth, we've seen a lot of those same brands come back and say, you know, while top line growth is great, profitability is more important. And what's the easiest way to reach profitability is, is increase the, the, you know, or improve the life cycle of that customer. So when we talk about this solution, you know, it's a component, it's a, it's a major component, right? It's a, it's a major right. touch point for the customer. But I think brands are going to have to get really creative in how they acquire customers. And you have to have all the tools in the back end to support that. Mm. So I, I really see e-commerce over the next couple of years rebounding. I, I think that you're going to see customers start to realize a more Amazon-like experience through technologies like these guys are talking about. And I think they're going to view it, as Ryan said, as more of a mandatory rather than a nice-to-have. You know, if you can if you can add some of these pieces in and increase the lifetime value and, and reduce CAC through in, in inbox marketing, then that's a value add for everybody involved. I think the brand experience is also going to be really important. With the T moves out there and things like that, anybody can order things that are relatively inexpensive and get them there, you know, not very quickly. But mm -hmm. having the relationship with your consumer is gonna be that much more important. Um, being able to offer in-store pickups and show people where your inventory is if it happens to be near them. I think all of those things are going to become more of a mandatory than a nice to have. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's very interesting. Akalash, what do you think? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think Blake touched upon a few things, right? So obviously when I'm very bullish on e-commerce, even if you look at post-COVID era, we are still, e-commerce still continuing to grow at like 15, 20% year over year, which is mm -hmm. much faster than brick and mortar. So what has happened, what has changed, Blake touched upon that also, CAC has gone through the roof. Overall, profitability has actually become a big challenge for e-commerce as a channel. 
for larger companies that e-commerce become a bigger percentage of their total sales it is starting to impact the profitability in a very meaningful fashion mm. so how do you actually tackle these challenges answers are pretty simple one you need to improve conversion on your e-commerce side the money which you are pouring on the marketing side how can you keep improving one step at a time every single day improve conversion anything and everything you can do to improve the visitors it it actually makes your life so much easier as a marketer mm. two once somebody converts how do you provide them a differentiated experience throughout the journey because we all know that first time purchase you are not profitable for any brand it's not a profitable customer it's really second and third and fourth fifth time when they are continuing to purchase with you once again how do you stand out in a crowded field ryan talked about every brand having 30 40 50 competitors out there how do you stand out right really creating that magical experience from the time they land on your site or even before to the time they receive the product in their hand keep them fully aware keep them kind of like make the whole journey magical with this hyper personalization which can be done using the data so i think that's where the money is and again it comes to while you can have all the data unless and until you execute on it it's mm. all meaningless yeah so that's where i think the power is uh kind of this is why three of us make it such a good natural partners to be that's how i think about it like yeah free purchase creating this on the back of un, like unmatchable execution capabilities on both the packaging or the shipping out of the door and then ultimately making the right decisions throughout the journey Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's very interesting. What do you think, Ryan? Yeah, and you know, look, brands are definitely banging their head against the wall as they have changing algorithms with marketing and uh, moving targets and rising CAC. Uh, but for me, there's one sort of North Star, one guiding light that if we just stay focused on this one simple thought, you know, everything rolls up to this. And to me, that's customer love. Customer love is the combination mm-hmm. of great products and great experience together. Uh, and you know at the end of the day having a even a small cohort of customers that love you is extremely valuable there is a big difference between customers that like you and customers that love you the difference is in revenue terms is is monumental uh, right. those are the customers that become your biggest brand advocates your ambassadors their lifetime value is much higher and one of the exercises that i highly recommend as if as you survey your customers you're going to see customers that are don't like you, customers that are, you know, lukewarm, a lot of customers are going to like you and you're going to have a small group of customers that absolutely love you. Your biggest opportunity is to figure out how do you get that group of uh, that cohort of customers that like you to love. Everything you, we, that we think about with our e-commerce brands mm-hmm. is under the umbrella of customer love, great products and pl- great experience because if you focus there, you know, the economics start to take care of themselves. And so, you know, for me, you know, it's, it has to do with a lot of things we talked about today. But, you know, in a competitive space, you know, getting customers to really, really feel connected to your brand reaps financial rewards, drives your income statement, drives your EBITDA, and, you know, is the best way to sort of offset some of these, you know, changing algorithms and changing cost structures that we have in the marketing landscape. Yeah, very interesting. And I, I, I love the, the customer love there. I think that's a, such an interesting thing because if you think about, everything we talked about here today and and the full transaction throughout i mean it's like it, it's like a relationship with the customer right i mean you you're almost dating them in a sense right you got a a good uh pickup line on an ad right you you hooked them you got them in and now you know you want to deliver on a a good experience through those those dates which is kind of packaging and you know putting all that together and then you're you're sealing the deal potentially for a second date right with on digital right and the and the custom pack list or whatever the case may be so so it's very interesting to talk to all three of you and and learn about your different solutions and not only individually how they're solving a lot of the challenges within these e-commerce transactions but also how they're coming together to make that even more powerful for for everybody involved right i mean for you guys for the customer at the end of it for the brand that's trying to to sell their product out there and really drive that overall value you for the e-commerce transaction. So so if people want to learn more about on digital, Ryan, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, our website's on digital.com. I love chatting with brands, even just helping them envision what does excellence and unboxing look like? How, how can we make that experience great? And so welcome to reach out to me on LinkedIn and welcome the opportunity to to connect more. All right, thanks Ryan. And Akilesh, what about Phoenix Commerce? Yeah, but our website is phoenixcommerce.com. Every every single piece of information, a lot of basically thought leadership articles are also there, tons of ideas for brands to learn from that. I'm always open on LinkedIn. Anybody can reach out. Would love to share exchange ideas as to how we can make this whole thing better for everybody. 
All right, great. And Blake? I mean, similar to these guys, I think all of us are really active on LinkedIn. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's funny when we talk about it being, I think, how similar-minded we are. All of us are talking to customers, big and small, via text message on a daily basis, right? So yeah. you can find me uh, on LinkedIn as well. Our website's just jgroup, J-A-Y group.com. Um, and I think maybe to add to that, just one more thing is, is you know, we maybe made it sound like this is for brands that are very large. These mm. guys have some very large customers. It doesn't have to be. We, we are talking all the time with brands who aren't doing 100,000 orders a month. This doesn't have to be a exclusively enterprise-level solution. We all have customers that are relatively on the small side, 5,000, 10,000 orders a month, and they see just as much value as the big guys. So I think that's the other thing is this doesn't have to, you know, well, it's an Amazon-like experience and it's a great customer experience. You don't have to have a massive footprint to make all of this happen. Yeah, no, the, I, I think that's a great point. I mean, this technology, what we are talking about here, it's a great leveler. I mean, you could be shipping 10 orders a month to a million orders a month. Mm-hmm. It's the same piece of technology, creates the same experience, everybody has access to it. Yeah, yeah and I think that's great. And, you know, I guess foundationally, too, it, it would be great for, for a brand to start at a smaller size, right, and then be able to scale that. And I'm sure you would you would end up with a lot more love maybe than like in, in that case. So so thank you very much, guys, for, for joining me here at Blake's spot here at J Group. And thanks to J Group for hosting us here. Uh, if you guys want to learn more about Phoenix Commerce on digital, the J Group, be sure to check out the links in the show notes and at thenewwarehouse.com. So thank you once again to the J Group for having the New Warehouse podcast on site here. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want more content from the new warehouse, check out our new video series called All Hands on LinkedIn. Just search for the new warehouse on LinkedIn and follow along.